China says it successfully tested its first hypersonic aircraft. It's a big uh, first step forward in aerospace technology that could intensify pressure on the U.S. military. The Wave Rider uses the shock waves in the air generated by its own flight to soar faster than five times the speed of sound. Experts say it can carry nuclear warheads, and that its speed and its unpredictable trajectory make it nearly impossible for any anti-missile defense systems to intercept. All right, tense moments in the skies over the South China Sea just moments ago. The Chinese military warning a U.S. surveillance plane six times as it flew over the hotly contested area where China has built up. Extensive military bases on man-made islands. CNN's Ivan Watson was aboard the uh, P-8 Poseidon spy plane and and now joins us from Okinawa. What happened? Hi there, Christine. Yeah, I just got off this this reconnaissance plane, and we got a very rare look, basically an exclusive for、uh, a U.S. news organization on board this plane. At China's controversial man-made islands in the South China Sea, it, it staked its claim uh, in uh, a huge body of water that other countries in the region, like Vietnam and the Philippines, have also claimed by just building these giant islands that have、uh, airstrips. They've got radar domes and towers and、uh, practically cities out. In the middle of the sea,、uh, of four and five-story high concrete buildings, I saw four of these man-made islands、uh, during our tour. And while we were flying, we were challenged at least six times by the Chinese military,、uh, which instructed our Navy crew to leave immediately to avoid a misunderstanding. At which point, the Navy crew responded with a scripted answer, arguing that this is international airspace and. The Navy plane has a right to be there, just like a plane from any other government or country in the world.、Uh, that said, the planes were staying about 12 nautical miles from、uh, the perimeter of these man-made Chinese islands. But the sheer、uh, scale of the investment that China has made in these man-made islands is really somewhat staggering. Again, these are airports in the middle of the sea. Virtual cities.、Uh, one of them that had a man-made harbor.、Uh, the Navy crew counted at least 85 ships in its man-made harbor. And one of the concerns is that by by building these islands, China could try to lay claim to any、uh, energy deposits that could be beneath the sea floor, which could be very lucrative, and that other countries that are much closer, like the Philippines, would definitely want for. Themselves. So the standoff continues over this.、Uh, the U.S. government has accused China of militarizing the islands, and China claims that it has right, the right to defend its own territory.、Uh, what's very clear, Christine, is that the Chinese don't look like they're going to be going anywhere away from these man-made islands. They spent so much to build. Anytime soon. Clearly, making、Christine. a big investment there, the Chinese are, and the U.S. The point of the U.S. mission there that you were on、um, was to promote the freedom of navigation, right, under international law. Those are technically、uh, a slightly different mission that are con- typically conducted by U.S. Navy warships、mm-hmm. and ships from other governments, like Australia.、Uh, this was described to me as a routine patrol. Conducted frequently by planes like this、uh, to survey the extent of the construction and developments on islands like this, and the Pentagon has accused the Chinese military of placing warplanes on these islands, of placing surface-to-air and surface-to-surface missiles and electronic jammers on these islands as well, suggesting that they could be used as forward operating bases. And Secretary Mattis, the U.S.、Uh, Secretary of Defense,、uh, has highlighted the fact that the Chinese leader Xi Jinping, during a visit to the White House in 2015, vowed there would be no militarization、mm-hmm. of the South China Sea. The way China responds to these accusations is it goes, "Hey, you're flying airplanes here. That's militarization as well." So you've got competing narratives here in what is、uh, a dispute over maritime territory as well. All right, Ivan.、Uh, great access. Thank you so much for bringing that to us, Ivan Watson, for us in Okinawa. Incredible real-time yeah, look right、really、there. Yeah, really interesting. A story that when you talk to people at the Pentagon, you talk to people on the Hill, is far more important、yeah. than people、this、are really giving big, it credit for. This is a big、right、story.、Now. No question about it. All right.
Now a CNN exclusive, an up-close look at China's extraordinary and provocative land grab in the South China Sea. CNN senior international correspondent Ivan Watson joins us live from Okinawa, Japan. Ivan, uh, the U.S. military is keeping a close eye on China's disputed man-made islands. What can you tell us? Well, Jim, CNN was the only U.S. news organization invited by the U.S. Navy on this surveillance flight that it routinely performs through the South China Sea. Now, why does this matter? China has claimed virtually all of this body of water for itself, despite about a half dozen other countries that also have claims to it. And this is important because this is a shipping route through which some 30 percent of the world's shipping passes through. This is what China's campaign to conquer the South China Sea looks like. Small cities sprouting up on man-made islands in the middle of the ocean. Filmed by CNN journalists on board a U.S. Navy reconnaissance plane. Here's the thing, this was originally a Boeing 737, so that's the kind of plane that you typically associate with civilian commercial travel. But it's been outfitted, modified by the military, and now it's got the kind of equipment that allows it to conduct missions involving surveillance and reconnaissance. It takes more than an hour to reach the South China Sea, one of the world's busiest trade routes. China claims almost all of this body of water for itself, dismissing competing claims from countries like the Philippines and Vietnam. The powerful cameras on board this plane demonstrate how China staked its territorial claims. It simply built entire islands that didn't exist a decade ago. The Chinese took coral reefs and atolls like this and embarked on a massive land reclamation project. In 2015, CNN flew with the U.S. Navy over Fiery Cross Reef, which was already a man-made island. And this is what it looks like today. Airstrips, radar towers, four and five story concrete buildings. Lieutenant Lauren Callan is the commander of this flight crew. It was very surprising to see just essentially airports out in the middle of the ocean. You're also scrutinizing these man-made islands. What are you on the lookout for? Uh, we're really just trying to see the uh, change that has occurred over the past several years, uh, observing any new buildings that might be coming up. At least six times during our flight, the Chinese military radios the plane, making it clear the U.S. Navy is not welcome here. U.S. military aircraft, Papa 8 Alpha. This is the Chinese Yunsh Reef. China has 70 of the national islands, including Yunsh Reef, and its adjacent waters. Leave immediately and keep far off so as to avoid any misunderstanding. I'm a sovereign of the United States Naval Aircraft, conducting lawful military activities beyond the national airspace of any coastal state. In exercising these rights as guaranteed by international law, I am operating with due regard for the rights and duties of all states. The U.S. continues to challenge Beijing's territorial claims by routinely sending warships and planes through the South China Sea. But that's done little to stop China's extraordinary land grab. On Friday, the Navy counted at least 85 ships in the man-made harbor of Subi Reef. It doesn't look like anybody's leaving anytime soon. Probably not. China's man-made archipelago appears to be here to stay. And Jim, you know, the tensions are mounting here. The Pentagon has accused China of militarizing these islands, parking surface-to-air missile batteries on them, putting warplanes on them. China, in turn, has responded and accused the U.S. of militarizing the South China Sea by sending more warships and warplanes closer to its man-made islands. Uh, I have to say one observation. Despite this massive island-building project and all the infrastructure we saw there, through the incredibly powerful cameras of the reconnaissance plane, we saw remarkably very little activity on the islands themselves. Perhaps only about a half dozen people walking around, some vehicles moving around, and in fact one of the Navy sailors said it, it, they look like Pechomkin villages. Hmm. But if China wants to lay claim to possible energy deposits below the sea, they're poised to, to be in a good position to do that despite competing claims from other countries in the region like the Philippines, like Vietnam. Jim?
Fascinating to see China expand their sphere of influence and even creating their own sphere of influence in some places. Ivan Watson, thank you very much. Let's bring back uh, CNN military and diplomatic analyst John Kirby. Uh, John, it does not look like they are giving up uh, this man-made creation of theirs anytime soon. No, not at all. You said it really well, Jim. Sphere of influence, they have created that. They have no intention of giving up on that. It's economic for them. A third of the of global maritime traffic goes through the South China Sea, and something like two thirds of Chinese maritime traffic trade goes through there. And it's security. Uh, they very much want to create a sphere of influence, a ring of defensible bases around the South China Sea to protect what they believe is their sovereignty and their and their own territorial security at the expense of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of many nations that border the South China Sea. Okay, it's a problem, a vexing problem for this administration to deal with. Uh, John Kirby, thank you very much.